Okay, so a very good evening to all of you. In this video, we are going to continue with our tumors of the salivary glands, and we are going to talk about the adenoid cystic carcinoma. For more such videos, check out our playlist and our channel, to be told. So again, revising, we had so far seen the classification of salivary gland tumors into benign neoplasms and malignant neoplasms, and we have already discussed the pleomorphic adenoma and the Warthin's tumor. In this video, we'll start talking about the malignant neoplasm, starting with the adenoid cystic carcinoma. So adenoid cystic carcinoma, formerly known as cylindroma, is a slow-growing but aggressive neoplasm with a remarkable capacity for recurrence and perineural invasion. Okay, so the key points here are slow-growing, aggressive, highly recurrent, and perineural invasion. So let us look at this diagram on the right. Here you have an image of the maxillary alveolar ridge and the palate, right? So this is the left maxillary alveolar ridge and the palate. And what you notice here is a swelling that has arisen here. Now, what you see is if I were to palpate the swelling, it would appear fixed to the underlying tissue. It would be immovable. Right, and it also appears to be invading into the underlying bone. Right, so with this, we know that it might be slow growing, but it is invasive in nature, it is aggressive in nature. And if I were to surgically excise it, I would see that it has a high tendency to recur. Right, I would excise it, but it would still recur. So, this is uh, these are the key points of the adenoid cystic carcinoma that it is a malignant neoplasm which is slow growing, aggressive, and highly recurrent. Okay, its other names include the cylindroma and the adenoid cystic basal cell carcinoma. And this is because of its histopathology, which we'll discuss as we move forward. Now, it is characterized by the proliferation of ductal myoepithelial cells in various patterns that we look at. And it is the fifth most common malignant tumor of the salivary glands. Okay, it is the fifth most common. The first most common being mucoepidermoid carcinoma. Clinically, it appears most commonly in the age of... Uh, sorry. So it clinically appears most commonly between fifth and sixth decades of life. It is more prominent in females. And the most common site of occurrence is the parotid, the submaxillary or the submandibular, and the minor glands of the palate. Right? So the most common uh, sites of occurrence are the parotid, submaxillary, and the minor glands of the palate. And some facts about it are that it is the most common salivary gland malignancy of the submandibular and the most common intraoral site of occurrence is the palate. In its presentation, uh, it typical it has typical features of a malignant salivary tumor. So what I mean to say by this is, so far when we were talking about the pleomorphic adenoma or the Warthin's tumor, our key points were that it is painless, right? We said it is slow growing. Then we said it is non-invasive. We said it is movable, right? So these are the things that we studied about benign tumors. The complete opposite is what you notice in malignant salivary gland tumors. So what you see here is a sign of early local pain, patient nerve paralysis, fixation to deeper structures, local invasion, and minor surface ulceration. So again, let's look at this image on the right. If a patient was to present to me with adenoid cystic carcinoma, his first complaint would be early local pain. He would have pain in this side. Uh, if it involved the parotid gland. Okay, this, this swelling is involving the maxillary alveolar ridge. But say it were to involve the parotid gland, he would complain of facial nerve paralysis, okay, because it affects the uh, facial nerve. The third thing he would see is if I were to palpate it, I would see that it is fixed to the underlying tissues. Okay, it is fixed to the deeper structure. And the fourth thing I would see is local invasion. So it would tend to infiltrate the underlying bone. It is an aggressive tumor. 
again we would see if you if you notice the skin over here you see that it has it has a propensity to ulcerate in the future right so it would show surface ulceration and the final thing is perineural invasion okay this is the key point of adenoid cystic carcinoma which is asked in every mcq right so let us try to understand this in the next slide so adenoid cystic carcinoma exhibits a tendency called perineural invasion right so now let us look at this diagram here what we have is a bundle of nerve fibers which is surrounded by something called the perineurium so perineurium is nothing but the connective tissue sheath which surrounds your nerve fibers right so this adenoid cystic carcinoma basically has the propensity to invade the perineurium right and this tendency or this propensity to invade a nerve is called neurotropism so again let me just revise that uh, every a uh, group of nerve fibers surrounded by the perineurium and adenoid cystic carcinoma has the tendency for perineural invasion histopathologically adenoid cystic carcinoma is composed of myoepithelial cells and ductal cells which have varied arrangement following are the major histological patterns which are cribriform tubular and solid and a combination of these is seen classified based on the predominant pattern so what i am trying to say here is adenoid cystic carcinoma tends to have varied patterns okay it has it it can be of different types so the three most common types that we have identified are the cribriform tubular and solid okay so a mnemonic to remember this is tcs which is tubular cribriform and solid okay usually you see a combination of one or two patterns within the same tumor and we classify it based on which is the most predominant pattern so now let us start talking about each of the patterns individually so let us start by talking about the cribriform pattern again i'm reminding you tcs okay easy way to remember tubular cribriform solid so we'll start by talking about the cribriform so cribriform pattern uh shows basaloid epithelial cell nests which contain multiple cylindrical cyst like patterns resembling swiss cheese or honey so if you see this image on the right you have nests and bundles of the same types of cells what are these cells called these are called basaloid epithelial cells why because they are small cells with hypochromatic nuclei and scanty cytoplasm okay so you see hypochromatic nuclei and scanty cytoplasm okay now what these do is they form nests and these nests surround cystic spaces okay so here what you see is a cystic space right you have a cystic space surrounded by basaloid epithelial cells which gives it the pattern of swiss cheese so if you didn't understand this let us look at this image right doesn't this look the same here you have a cyst in the middle and here you have basaloid epithelial cells surrounding it so if you wanted to think like an oral pathologist everything looks like food okay so this is the swiss cheese pattern now these cysts right these cystic spaces they project inwards in the form of cylinders right it would project inwards in the form of cylinder which is why it is also called the cylindroma okay and because you see basaloid epithelial cells it is also called adenoid basal cell carcinoma right so you have uh, basaloid epithelial cells surrounding cystic spaces so in up with this next is the tubular pattern where you see tubular structures lined by stratified column a cuboidal epithelium and finally you see the solid pattern here you have solid groups of cuboidal cells with no duct and no cyst okay so it's just a solid this is not a solid pattern but if it was solid pattern it would be just solid groups of cells without any cystic spaces right now also this pattern is the least common and it is the most recurrent okay it has the highest rate of recurrence in the poorest prognosis 
right? And out of these, the most common is the cribriform pattern. In this diagram, this is a real histological section. Okay, so so far I showed you a diagram which I've drawn. This is the real histological section. So let us try to identify our key points here. Clearly, when you see this, you see that cribriform pattern is more predominant. So naturally, you have baseloid epithelial cells, which is surrounding your cystic spaces, right? Multiple cysts. Cysts. Cyst. Everywhere you see is a cystic space, right? And surrounding these are baseloid epithelial cells. What had we discussed? These are small cells, hypochromatic nucleus, scanty, uh, uh, scanty cytoplasm, right? And around this, the connective tissue appears to be hyalinized. So if you see it in a higher section, higher magnification, you see hyalinized connective tissue, right? So again, this is cis surrounded by baseload epithelial cells and overall surrounded by hyalinized connective tissue. Finishing with the treatment, the most common uh, line of treatment includes surgical resection with adjuvant radiation therapy if necessary. Always remember that this is a relentless tumor, right? We said that it has a, a aggressive nature. It is locally invasive. It is a recurrent tumor. It tends to recur as well as eventual dist distance metastasis can occur, right? So it can move forward into your lungs, bones, and other organs of the body. And again, as we had talked, out of the three patterns, which is tubular, cribriform, and solid, solid is a high-grade lesion with highest recurrence rates up to 100% compared to the other variants. To summarize, adenoid cystic carcinoma, formerly known as palindroma, is a slow-growing but aggressive neoplasm with remarkable capacity for recurrence and perineural invasion. It is the fifth most common uh, salivary gland malignancy seen in fifth to sixth decade, females, parotid, submandibular, glands of palate. The five key clinical features that we saw were early local pain, patient of paralysis in case of parotid tumors, fixation and local invasion, as well as surface ulceration. And then we saw a very unique property, which was perineural invasion, which was the uh, propensity to invade nerve. The next thing we saw is the histological pattern where we saw it is composed of myopithelial cells and ductal cells in varied arrangements, TCS, tubular cribriform solid. And then we saw about each of the patterns, especially the cribriform, which gave us a Swiss cheese or a cylindromic pattern. The treatment included surgical excision, local invasion, and a poor prognosis because of uh, high rates of recurrence and eventual distant, met, uh, distant metastasis. So before concluding the lecture, I have a few questions for you. The first one being, what are the various histological patterns that you see in adenoid cystic carcinoma? What is the Swiss cheese pattern? Which salivary gland tumor shows perineural invasion? And which pattern of adenoid cystic carcinoma exhibits the highest recurrence rate? Remember, it was almost 100%. And here I would like to add one more thing. See, perineural invasion is most commonly ex exhibited by adenoid cystic carcinoma, but it could also be by adenocarcinoma. But majority of the times your MCQ will have adenoid cystic carcinoma. It would ask you, uh, say BCC, SCC, basal cell carcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma, and malignant melanoma. And adenoid cystic carcinoma, out of which, which of these has a tendency for perineural invasion? Which of these has neurotropism? So the answer would be adenoid cystic carcinoma. Okay, so I hope you solve the rest of this easily. And with this, we come to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. If you have any doubts, you can comment down. And I hope you have a great day ahead. So uh, bye.